the common modalities of governance, My name is Charlotte Hess, and um, I am a commons researcher. I've been working on the commons in one way or another since around 1989. Uh, that's when I started working at the workshop in political theory and policy analysis at Indiana University with the Ostroms, with Benson and Eleanor Ostrom, and uh, really started work learning about commons, and um, it became a passion of mine, and I had the opportunity to build a library on the commons, the largest library in the commons mm -hmm. in the world, and later on the digital library of the commons. Um, we also created the archives for the International Association for the Study of the Commons. And I've been involved in that organization um, since the early 90s and was recently elected president-elect 2015-17 to 17, and will serve on the uh, executive council beginning now, leaving for Japan after this, this conference. So, quick background. So you, you mainly, uh, that's your first uh, participation, this kind of commoning conference. You're, more, you're much more um, involved in the research association and the research networks. So wha 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 how do you see this kind of conference and what do you expect mm -hmm. as an output of this kind of conference here? Well, I'd like to answer that personally, what, what, what I can expect and what, why I wanted to, to come. Um, and first of all, I think that all of these um, initiatives that are happening throughout the, the world are, are, are critical to our understanding of the ongoing evolution of commons. And um, um, one of the things that I've tried to do is survey what's, what's happening. Now it's grown beyond any one one person's job to do that. It's, it's huge. There's a huge amount going on, but it gives me a better idea of what's happening on the ground uh, in terms of movement. This is not um, uh, uh, unrelated to what's happening um, in IASC. Now, granted, many of these people are doing you know, dry academic work but many of them are also working on the ground with practitioners in many resource areas um, and also building movements of one sort or, or another to um, um, essentially to safeguard commons against enclosure, which is becoming uh, an ever-increasing threat throughout the world, regardless of the resource and regardless of the geography. And so uh, le let's go directly now to your 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 research and wh what what you consider important now. What could be your contribution in this kind of conference? Well, I I, I don't know how much of a contribution, but I have. Uh, most of my publications have been focused on um, knowledge commons and new commons, how new commons are, are formed and um, how they occur and that, that sort of thing. But in the past um, five months I've been on research leave and I've spent most of that time reading in the area of global commons and I've been really shocked to, um, to learn how rare it is for global commons of any sort, climate, uh, biodiversity, um, water resources, just you name it. Um, be it a global commons, I'm, I'm shocked to find out how rare it is for it to be described, in fact, as a commons. So what um, that made me realize was that if the public is reading about these problems, not as a commons, um, but just as a problem out in the world, then they're left to believe that there's somebody out there that's going to solve it. 
you know, and that somebody is either going to be some government group or some corporate group, private or, or, or state. And what's left out is the role of the individual, the role of the public, and the role of collective action. And um, so I think that that is, um, I, I, I see that as an immediate assignment on the part of people in the knowledge commons area. And that is to advance what I would call commons, our commons knowledge, our, our knowledge about commons. We need to advance that as a commons itself. And with a mission that more and more people need to hear and understand their role as a commoner. Any type of commons, fisheries, forests, irrigation systems, riparian systems, doesn't matter. All of them have to do with shared understandings and um, with people coming and communicating with each other and making decisions and rules the best ones they can using their shared knowledge in order to manage and to sustain this resource. All, all commons are about that. And, um, and I think that uh, what is difficult is that there's not enough research on how we extend this to these huge global uh, commons areas. We don't know enough. We don't have enough information to go by. And that's why I think um, uh, what Lynn Ostrom talked about more and more frequently in, in, the, in, the, past few, in the last few years of her life was um, to build on polycentric systems, and that is this nested system of, of governance as a model to, to deal with, with um, global commons. And certainly she did not see as, you know, the answer as being some guys or gals at the top making decisions. It, that, that, because that is completely contradicts all her finding, findings of that there are no panaceas. There's no one right answer. So you have to have nested systems in order to have adaptation to local variances, local cultures, and local needs, and local issues. How do you see that the research could be oriented uh, in order to respond to what, you, what, what you're saying now? Um, well, I have a lot, you know, first, I'm just beginning to think about this, and I already have a lot of ideas, and I hope I'll have a lot more. I mean, one thing is that we desperately need in the area of all types of new commons and evolving commons is that we need case studies. We need to understand if they work, how are they working, so that, so that, so that others can learn from them. And so also we can, can um, analyze them and begin to discern design principles in the same way that Lynn Ostrom was able to do when she, when she studied uh, robust, um, small natural resource commons. So, if, um, so one thing I think that identification of all of these different um, movements and especially uh, the successful initiatives and movements is that I think that it would really attract um, researchers to, to begin to understand how, how do these work? What can we learn from them? Um, and um, so I know um, I'm in a network with a group that's interested in and building a database of, res of, of case studies, for instance. And, and I'd, I'd like to um, work and have been talking with another group to have a, a website that collects, you know, that maps um, movements and initiatives. I'd love to have an interactive a map, you know, so let's say a, a geographical map where you could click on, let's say, South America and see what's happening in different places in South America. So, you know, if you, if you click on Sao Paulo and then, okay, so within Sao Paulo, what's that? And, and, but have another map that's maybe a resource map, the resource meaning irrigation or water and, and, and go into well, what movements are happening in that way. I think that there, I mean, there's a lot of different types of interactive maps so that people could have more rapid and, and immediate access to the kind of knowledge and information that they need. 
And how uh, do you see the merging of this kind of academic research and what is being doing now? You, you talk about mapping, for example, now there's a lot of uh, experiments of mapping the commons in different countries. The most ex important one lately in Barcelona, they did this famous wake sprint, uh, you mm -hmm. know, in one day they mapped all the commons in Latin America, this kind of thing. Um, I, I see the merging of this academic research with all these initiatives yeah. that come from the crowd crowdsourced initiative. Yeah, and I, th and I think that a lot of this would be crowdsourced. Um, well, I think it's merged by juxtaposing and and providing this information in in the same platform in the same pl in the same space, and not saying this is academic. This is activist, and labeling them in that way, as opposed to saying, this is what's useful to know. Right. So if we focus on, this is what's useful, this is what you need to know, I think um, we need to approach it that way. And I think that um, this is, um, if there were such a, a website which tries to pull, pull, just identify these other websites and other initiatives and other databases. I think they would need it would need to be well tended and well managed. There needs to be a lot of proactive work on it. It can't just be set up and then just allowed to, because it's, the demands on it would be great. Mm -hmm. There would have to be a sustainability package for it. So do you see the evolution of this movement of the Commons or international movement or not? Well, I don't think I can say something that's going to radically depart from what I have said because I do believe it is about sharing knowledge and 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 already I've heard um, so many I can't keep up with my own notes. There's so many different um, interesting little tidbits. So just mention uh, you know the, the the group in the Philippines or in Venezuela. Now I need to go and look up these things and write. So in other words. There, it already there's this huge assignment to follow up. What I would really hope is that this conference, that that, that from, from the Heinrich Burrow people, is that they would put up you know, further information with links to every single movement and initiative that's been mentioned. Do you think that the, the, the academy itself could, could provide some space for this kind of joint initiative? Well, really good question. Here's the thing, um, and I've said this to the academics and to the to a lot of the ISC academics, and that is, is that they have a lot to learn from the activists, and they need to to. That's why we need to be in, uh, in better um, communication with them. Academics, unfortunately, their lives are um, distracted by these needs of tenure and these committee meetings and their disciplines. The thing is, is that academics that are in commons, it's a secondary thing for them. So they, if they already have, so if they publish in commons, they also have to publish in economics or anthropology or political science or law. So um, they already feel strained. I think as an information commons person, I think maybe this assignment of collaboration could be helped out by a kind of a website that I'm talking about that draws them together and not says, not gives them a further assignment of saying do this. The other thing is, is that, that I do think that by identifying these movements and making and um, that are on the ground throughout the world that it would draw in more researchers to, to try to to uh, understand the rules, understand the, the communities of users, uh, you know, um, understand it in a deeper way that might facilitate um, the, the activist part of it. So I don't think that we can pass on the assignment to them. I think that, that the main thing is let's make, let's make this information about these, these, these factions or these different areas, let's make it easier to view in, in one sitting, in one fell swoop, and not make it such a, uh, um, 
a tedious process of going to one site and then to another site and that kind of thing. Okay, the last and very short question is the question I, I asked uh, to everybody since uh, the first conference here. It's just if you had to define the comments in one sentence, what would it be? Well, over the years, the definitions of, of commons has changed radically. So it, this, is, this is a difficult question to ask me because um, I am fully aware that if you're asking an economist to define the commons, it's a totally different question than if you, if you ask a, a legal scholar to define the commons. Um, so, I have been chewing on the idea of this, this idea that there's no commons without commoning. Um, I, uh, Lynn Ostrom and I have defined commons as a shared resource subject to um, vulnerability or social dilemmas. Now, if you say that there's no um, resource without commoning, it kind of, that kind of implies that. I'm caught up with the problem is that I do believe that in the global commons arena, there are in fact commons without where there's no commoning happening. There needs to be commoning happening. There needs to be people involved, but as, as yet, I think they're out there waiting for their community to come to them. Thank <laughs> you.